The next step to this would be to add these constraints here. This is known as 3D tolerancing and annotation, or model-based definition. Rather than to dimension the drawing in a drawing environment inside a border, you would dimension the 3D model. So you'll have dimensions here added to the front view. I'm going to delete them out and try to recreate them. Um, it seems like the more they improve the system, the more cumbersome this becomes. I will um, go to the annotation tab. Remember, we're using the 3D tolerancing annotation workbench. So if you aren't in there, you have to hit 3D and go find it and make that the active workbench. In the annotation tab, we have dimensions. It may be underneath frame basic dimensions. So you'll have to find the down arrow and select the dimensions. It's easy right here where I grab the line and it dimensions it. The headache is moving it off the part. It wants to keep grabbing the part on my cursor. It's a nightmare. I'm going to try and do it without zooming in. You'll see what happens. See, I'm, I'm not able to grab it. It won't let me get it this far away. And I try and grab on it. Oh, son of a gun. I actually got it. I bet you, you you may have trouble. You probably have to zoom in to grab that dimension to move it out. Now, the problem is I go and grab this line right now. It's still active. It's waiting for me to place it. I moved it and I stopped moving it. And you think, okay, it's good there. But it's not. If I click another line, it's going to kick it and try and do an angle. So I have to click again for a location and then it turns blue. And then you got to click again to get off of the, the dimension. So to me, this is cumbersome. There's a whole bunch of clicking going on just to show the one dimension. I'll do it again. I'll grab this line here. Make sure you got the edge and not the face. And then it puts it right on the part where I can't hardly get to it. I'm going to try and grab it. I got real lucky again. I was able to grab that. So to change the dimensions, what you do is you highlight the whole thing. And it just highlights any of the dimensions. And I can right click on any one of them to go to properties. So contextual menu on those, any one of the constraints. I should say 3D tolerancing dimensions here and you go to the tab called value. In the value tab you're going to switch this to numdink. That's inches. So you click on that and select apply and OK and you can see it went to two place dimension. This is an ANSI drawing so we're going to use two place dimensions. Um, verify your part or your exercise. Do you work to ANSI or ASME specs? It should be in the canvas telling you what to do. So we've got these set to ANSI. What I don't like is this is going parallel to this. That three inch dimension really should be going horizontal ANSI ASME specs. So unfortunately I have to go back to properties and under the same thing tab value there's the orientation we're gonna go switch this to perpendicular apply that select OK click off the part there's your dimension there's your dimension there and when they go into the front view You see the three inch and the six inch dimension here. What other dimensions belong on there? Can you figure it out? I'll give you a hint. Go to your sketch. All the constraints that you put in the sketch should match the dimensions in the model based definition. One of the things I like best about the sketch is when I have a fully constrained profile, I know those are the same ones I should do in my drawing and my model based definition. When I'm in my model based definition or doing the drawings, it doesn't tell you if you've over dimensioned and have too many dimensions or if you've under dimensions where you're missing a dimension. Here, I know I have enough dimensions because the part's green. It told me it's fully constrained when I analyzed it, so I know it's all good to go.
I'm going to go ahead and exit out of the part. Go back to the ISO view. And you could I guess you could stay in that environment or you could go here and figure out what dimensions you still need to have. I'll try and do one more for you just in case you're not catching on. I go to annotation and then hit the arrow. Dimensions. In this case, I'm going to grab the bottom line and this edge right here. I'm going to slide this out, which I wish I could, but I got to try and grab that where it's not getting the face. And slide that out. Okay. So I'll do the rest. If you need help, I'll you can keep watching the video, but I think you can probably do it. The next one, I always go from the datum up. Make sure it says edge. And then pray you can get this. See how it's saying the face? I know it's not going to get it. Let's see if I can get it there. Slide this one out. Now I have those dimensions. Click a position. Go back to dimension. And we'll dimension from this datum. Make sure it says edge to this edge. Now in this case, I can make it a little easier to grab. What I'll do here is uh, I'll just click to take accept the location and put in another dimension. Grab this edge and this edge over here. And then I'll switch over to the view, front view. And personally, I think it's easier to work here. I'll slide this up. Ah, this is a little too close. I'll, I'll slide this up too. Yikes. You know, what I always forget is I got to grab this, slide it up, click a location to accept it. Then I can grab this one, slide up, click a location to accept it. And you can see that I got to num dink these. So I just simply, I like to zoom out a little bit so I can create a big trap, and make sure everything gets picked up. Right click on any one of these and go to property. Go to properties and change that to numdink. Apply. OK. I click off of it just to look. You can see these are all in inches. I'm going to highlight this. Sorry, I missed. I'm trying to highlight those. Uh, just try to get a big enough box where I get all of both of those so I can do these both at one time. Right click properties. Change parallel to perpendicular. Apply and OK. And that finishes dimensioning the front view. I can go back to the ISO view. And what you want to do is double click the right view. It'll turn off everything in the front view and show me that datum C I created because I need one more dimension. Under annotate, dimensions, I need to grab this line here. Oh, slide it up and grab this and slide that up. If I go to the view and hit right view, I see datum C and this dimension. Remember, I could highlight everything, but it's just the one. You got to click it to locate it. Click again, right click properties, numdink this. So what a lot of people like to do is just create all the dimensions at once and then highlight everything and then num take it. All right, so that's what your front view looks like. I'll double click the front view. I will no longer see these dimensions. I have to switch to the front view. And there's the dimensions for the front view. Go into the ISO view. Fit all in. Now it's got that frame on there, so it's kind of a pain. 
that's always a pain when you're doing the fit all in stuff with that frame around this area all right but that's all your model based definition dimensions dimensioning in 3d rather than on a drawing with a border this is done in the 3d tolerancing annotation feature our workbench application